I want to take you on a quick tour of a typical WordPress blog. This one that you're looking at here has a header at the top. If you're dealing with a custom blog, you have the ability to create just about any kind of graphic and place it up in this area so that your site has its own personality. Below here is the content and then also the navigation. On the content side, what I've done here is designate my home page as my blog page, which means my newest posts will always remain on top and then posts that I made earlier appear down below in chronological order. So you see that I've now posted up many articles and they all appear on this front page. On the side here are links to my pages. Pages are different than posts because they have uh, static content. For instance, an about page. And I'll click through here and you'll see the about page is where I might talk about myself or about the company or about the product. Further down my navigation here, I have archives. Archives are where your articles are placed by the system based on their date. Archives are just simply put in there dynamically so that I can go back to any given month and see all of the posts that were made in that particular month. In this case it was our newest post on top. Below archives I have categories. Categories are the distinctions that I make to each of my articles. For instance this article here is posted in the business category. So if I click on the business category in my categories list, we should also see that article listed in that category with others that might be allocated to the business category. Going back to our home page, you can see that below categories I have my blog role. This is also known as a link list. These are simply links that I want to share with my visitors that I place into the system myself. Below that is my admin or meta section where my login button is. I might also have an RSS feeds list where people can subscribe to my RSS feeds. And then of course I have the ability to do a lot of things on my home page here. For instance, place sponsors or advertising. I can of course upload images and I can even upload things like movies and audio. And I'll show you all those things later on. Right now let's log in though and go take a look at the, the back-end office. I'm initially taken to the dashboard. The dashboard is going to give me a quick view of everything that's going on in my blog. I can now go up here and navigate if I'm ready to write an article or a page. I have the ability to do that from this Write tab. There we go and I have the ability to write posts or pages, create links, and mail subscribers. I can also manage the content that I already have in my system by going to this Manage tab. You see here I have a list of all of the posts, or I can go to this next sub-tab and see a list of all of the pages that I have in the system. And to edit one I can simply click on the title and it will take me into the edit window for that particular article and I have the ability then to modify the text or any of the settings. I do have global settings that I can manage in the system over here on the right hand side. Things that have to do with the general setup of the blog. I can also manage my plugins where I might come in and, and add functionality to my blog. Or on the far right here I have the ability to manage users. I can add new users to my system simply by adding a new user here. And I can assign users to be various levels of, of uh, authorship. For instance, if I have a business partner, I might want them to have admin rights, which gives them the rights to do everything in the system. Or I might just want them to be a contributor, which allows them to post content into the system, and it waits there until I approve it before it goes live. When we're ready to log out, we simply click the log out button and we return to our login screen that confirms that we're logged out. And up here in the left, I can click back to our blog and there we are at the uh, public site. And that was a quick tour.